Hello dear students, this short video will help you to prepare for your OSPE slides related to histology. You have histology of the upper and the lower GIT. We will look into the uh, sections related to the oral cavity that is the tongue, the esophagus, uh, the stomach and the salivary glands. So histology of the tongue, it, here you can see that these are the circumvallate papillae. Circumvallate papillae and it is lined by uh, non-cretinized stratified squamous epithelium. Below that you can see these are the serous glands and the light pink what you are seeing here these are the skeletal muscle. Section of the protoid gland shows serous acini these are the serous acini and this is an intralobular duct inside the acini and this is an interlobular duct between the uh, different uh, lobes of the uh, protoid gland. Moving on, the submandibular gland, it is a mixed gland. It has uh, lightly stained mucus acini and darkly stained serous acini. When a serous acini is situated close to the mucus acini, this is called as a serous demilune. Serous demilune. This is an interlobular duct which you are seeing here. The sublingual gland which is a pure mucus gland can be seen here as lightly stained uh, acini. Moving on to the section of the esophagus, you have stratified squamous non-cretinized epithelium and then in the submucosa you have esophageal mucus glands. In the muscle layer you have inner circular outer longitudinal. Okay, And the outermost is the adventitia because it is not covered with peritoneum. Again under the microscope you can see the stratified squamous non-cretinized epithelium which is a part of the mucosa. Then the submucosa shows esophageal glands. The muscle layer uh, upper one third is made up of skeletal muscle, middle is skeletal and smooth and the lower most is only smooth muscle lower one third. Okay so here again you can see the mucosa. Uh, stratified squamous non-cretinized epithelium. The submucosa here the glands are not very clear. Okay, This is the muscle layer and this is the adventitia. Coming to stomach it is lined by simple columnar epithelium. Simple columnar epithelium there are no goblet cells. The, the depression you see here this is called as a gastric pit Okay, and this is the gastric gland or the here it is in the fundus so it's a fundic gland. Okay. It is situated in the lamina propria. So what are the cells in these fundic glands? These are the parietal cells, chief cells and the mucus cells. Okay. Come to submucosa, there is no uh, typical features, just blood vessels. Muscle layer, you have inner oblique, middle circular, outer longitudinal. The outermost is called as mesothelium which is the serosa. Here uh, you can see also it is a section of the stomach and uh, this is the epithelial lining of the stomach. It is simple columnar epithelium. All this which you are seeing is the fundic glands. Fundic glands. This is the submucosa with some blood vessels and this is the muscular layer. Okay, Here uh, another zoomed out view of the uh, stomach fundus in which this is the mucosa. This is submucosa. This is the muscular layer and outermost is called as the C rosa. This is uh, histology of the st uh, stomach pylorus. Okay, here it's more like bluish uh, in stain, otherwise, you will, may not be able to differentiate between the fundus and the pylorus. Okay, uh, here it is submucosa. This is the muscular layer. Coming to the duodenum, these are the villi. The villi is lined with simple columnar epithelium and these are the white colored cells are the goblet cells which you are seeing here. The depression is called as um, uh, intestinal gland or crypts of liverkin. Okay, crypts of liverkin. Then uh, this is the submucosa which has Brunner's gland. Brunner's gland. Okay, remember B in front of runner is Brunner's gland. Okay, so these are mucus glands in the submucosa. So these are the typical features of the duodenum. Next, you can again see the duodenum. These are, these are the villi and here you can see the villi. Some of them are not continuous because it's cut. 
according to the histological section then in the submucosa you have a bronze gland okay these are mucus uh, glands and some of them open into and open their secretion into the intestinal uh, crypts intestinal crypts then the sub uh, these are again a part of the submucosa this is the muscular layer okay coming to section of ileum this is again the uh, villi uh, which has more goblet cells when compared compared to duodenum this is uh, the pears patches okay so you will see lots of pears patches dark blue in stained in a circular outer longitudinal layer in the muscle and outermost is called as serosa okay so pears patches is lymphoid aggregation Uh, this section also of the ileum so if if this is asked this entire large uh, you know this large fold if it is asked like a square if i put a square on it uh, you should answer it as uh, plica circularis plica circularis and if it is a smaller one it is called as villi these are the villi on plica circularis okay and these dark blue areas these are the uh, pears patches pears patches this is a muscular layer which you are seeing okay in a circular outer longitudinal okay again uh, a more zoomed view you can see the uh, villi okay with uh, goblet cells this dark blue are the pears patches and this is submucosa this is the muscular layer okay now coming to large intestine no villi there is no villi the these are the intestinal crypts which are very deep okay very deep intestinal crypts and you can see lots of goblet cells goblet cells have increased and here and there you may sometimes see a, a solitary lymphatic nodule lymphatic nodule the submucosa is not uh, typical of any uh, features it just has some blood vessels connective tissue then you have inner circular outer longitudinal the outer longitudinal is uh, collected together to form tinea coli tinea coli and here you can see some fat cells it for it is the appendices epiploike appendices epiploike okay so this is also a histology of the large intestine under the microscope this is the mucosa so again the same simple columnar epithelium the goblet cells are not very clear this is the sub mucosa and this is the muscular layer coming to appendix it's the only slide which has a lumen in the center okay so this is the simple uh, lined by simple columnar epithelium the uh, crypts are very short and what you see dark blue over here these are the lymphatic nodules lymphatic nodules with the germinal center you have the muscle layer okay and then last is the serosa so again you can see the lumen it is filled with debris this is the uh, the mucosa lined with uh, simple columnar epithelium short uh, short um, uh, glands intestinal glands and then you can see lymphoid follicles lymphoid follicles okay sub mucosa also shows some fat here and this is the muscular layer okay another view the lumen filled with um, debris the simple columnar epithelium uh, which is the uh, mucosa then the submucosa with the lymphoid follicles and this is the muscular layer okay now moving on you have the liver liver uh, section of the liver shows hepatic lobules lot of hepatic lobules it's six sided okay polygonal and in the center you have the central vein and on each corner you have the portal triad portal triad okay now the portal triad consists of three structures that is the portal vein the hepatic artery and the bile ductule okay so if you have uh, a diamond shaped uh, space like this this is called as hepatic acinus uh, it is uh, formed by the two portal triads and two central veins joined together okay it is the it is divided into zone 1 which is uh, highly vascular zone 2 which is less vascular than the uh, or less oxygenated than the uh, zone 1 and the zone 3 is the least oxygenated okay Uh, also remember the blood flows from the periphery towards the center periphery towards the center okay now we have uh, uh, a portal lobule formed by uh, joining of three central veins together forming a triangle 
with the portal triad in the center okay so portal triad is in the center this is related to drainage of the bile and the bile flows from the center to the periphery center to the periphery okay so you can see central vein and then uh, from the central vein uh, you can see radiating hepatic cords these are called hepatocytes hepatic cords okay and the spaces are called as sinusoid spaces are called as sinusoid they are lined with um, uh, endothelium and also you can see kupfer cells okay kupfer cell these are macrophages okay and each corner uh, you can also see the portal triad now uh, in the center you have the central vein uh, and you can see in each corner you have the portal triad if it is marked and asked what are the structures here you have to write it as portal venule hepatic arteriole and uh, bile ductule okay these dark cells these are the hepatocytes and these spaces will be the sinusoids okay the same central vein then you have the portal area and then you can see that uh, the spaces are the sinusoids and the cells are the hepatocytes okay now uh, this is a portal tract uh, which has three uh, structures so portal vein this is a large portal vein here okay then you have the next one hepatic duct this is a hepatic duct okay and this will be the hepatic artery this is the hepatic artery so the three structures are seen here moving on we have pancreas the darkly stained serous acini okay which forms the uh, or gives the exocrine function and then uh, you have the lightly stained uh, endocrine function by the islets of Langerhans by the islets of Langerhans there are lots of capillaries seen in the center okay these are the capillaries seen here now this is a serous acini with an intercalated duct okay there's an intercalated duct in the center uh, this is a lightly stained uh, islets of Langerhans uh, and if it is asked you what are the cells over here you have to write about alpha cells beta cells okay and what they secrete and these are the serous acini serous acini okay this is an interlobular duct interlobular duct okay again this is an islets of Langerhans uh, and these are serous acini around this is a section of the gallbladder which has simple columnar epithelium no goblet cells okay and there is a fibro fibrous and muscular smooth muscle layer present okay so by this we have finished with the histological slides uh, of the gastrointestinal system all the best for your exams thank you all